it's cool to get uh it's cool when the international audiences take interest in the crazy stuff that we do i'll be honest like the whole uh like industry has been like a bit of a pleasure in mine for a long time like i've watched the youtube videos for ages like I've, you know the, the likes of i've seen yourself obviously joey chestnut matt stoney i just think it's, it's just crazy <laughs> it's a lot of fun i mean i i, I get to travel and entertain people doing what I love, you know, meet cool people, eat some food and uh and the the schedule's not traditional, but it allows me to spend time with my family. So right now that's kind of the the biggest blessing. Yeah, that's lovely. I mean, so the ninth title the Nathan Tuttle contest, I mean that's just crazy in itself. I've seen all the belts behind you already. <laughs> without without being too nice, I mean what makes you so much better than every other person that you're competing with? Okay, so uh, thank you, first of all. Uh, but I think I, I still have so much more to showcase. I think my, uh, you know, for me, my number is low because I've been, uh, I think I've been more motivated than ever. And my practice and training just hasn't translated. So while uh, I feel like I'm more disappointed in my 40 and 39 and a half in the last two years than I was in my, you know, 34, 37 early on. I feel like I should be progressing. And, uh, you know, there are a number of guys, there are a number of uh, male competitors who have advanced rapidly. And I very much dislike being beat by people who are ranked beneath me. Um, there's no reason. I had more space at Nathan's. I just ran out of time. So I need to be a lot faster out of the gate. Um, so why I'm more, why I'm dominant on the women's side, um, I would say it's a mixture of um, self-censorship by just women who might otherwise decide to try an eating contest. Um, I think there's still a little bit of stigma um, and self-consciousness when it comes to doing eating contests. It's something that men get over or don't consider as much. Um, because to be honest, I was one of them. Walking into my very first ever competition, I was so nervous. I was so self-conscious that my friend had to hold my hand walking into the building. I, I kept telling myself, you don't belong here. People are going to laugh at you. Um, you'll have pictures taken of you with rib sauce on your face. Um, <laughs> but I tried, I won my heat, I advanced to the finals and I won the whole contest. Um, you know, and that was amongst people who consider themselves semi-professionals, people with experience. And uh, if you tell yourself you can't do something, you know, mo more than likely you'll never find out if you can or not. So I think that's part of it on the women's side. I've always been eager to try new things. I've been very adventurous and I have an incredibly competitive spirit, um, which uh, we just don't see on the women's side right now. Wow, well, that's amazing. And I mean, fair play. That's a very full first. answer, but it, it's just, it's not a question. Oh, can... it's great. Like that's, yeah, I appreciate you opening up and that's really inspiring. I, I, guys, I, don't, I don't think many people would consider that at all. Obviously you were that nervous for the first one and you still want it, which is... <laughs> I, you know, and it's just, I think about all the things that, you know, I've talked myself out of in life. You know, I can't sing, I can't dance, I'll, I won't know anybody when I get there, or whatever the case is. I, you eliminate a lot of possibility when you tell yourself you're not good enough and you're not willing to try. That's so true. I mean, amazing. I'm, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, no, I didn't true. know that you were a good journalist. You know, maybe it took trial and error. Maybe you had a natural talent that you maybe you're your own worst critic and you never would have given it a shot if it hadn't been for like a little bit of luck. And I think, uh, you know, it's just kind of why I'm here. That hits home, I'll be honest. You hit the nail on the head there. That's, yeah, it's really true. It's, it's relatable in a lot of, obviously, it's just life really. It's not even specific to what you're doing, that, it's just life. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of a lot of how I see competitive eating. Um, when I'm eating hot dogs for 10 minutes at a stretch, there are times when I don't want to do it, where it's difficult, where I want to give up. Or questioning what I'm doing and and that's the same in life and you just have to tell yourself you know this isn't where I give up this isn't where I slow down if things are tough right now maybe it's just an opportunity for me to showcase my strengths um so uh yeah they're they're just kind of like a lot of life lessons that I've had to apply to competitive eating so that that leads naturally as well I mean I mean first of all how did you know that you had a talent for this or could eat fast or I don't even know what it is that would have been the first thing. How did you realize right at the beginning, you know, this is something I can do? So, so it all started by happenstance. Uh, I like to say I didn't choose competitive eating. Competitive eating chose me. Um, and it just kind of came 
I stumbled upon it really because I was willing to try new things. Uh, mm -hmm. I've hiked Machu Picchu. I've been skydiving. You know, none of these things really required talent. They just require hard work um, and a little bit of focus. And uh, it, doing an eating challenge was just one of those things. I never thought I'd make a career out of it. But I, I plugged along and finished 12 pounds of Vietnamese noodle soup for which the restaurant was offering a progressive jackpot. And uh, it's just something that I'd done because my friends tried it and failed, thought it was funny. I, I went in with a much more serious approach um, without any practice or preparation. And uh, I started getting requests to do uh, restaurant challenges across the Las Vegas Valley where I lived at the time. Um, so I figured why not? And then I eventually I decided to do a head-to-head -head competition um, I'm incredibly competitive. I was self-conscious, but that, that part of me who wanted to try, who thought I had a shot, um, that one thankfully won that battle in my mind. And, uh, yeah, once I won my first contest, I, I enjoyed very early success and it was off to the races. Uh, but basically immediately after the contest, I'm just incredibly dehydrated. I was yeah. taking a lot of sodium. I, I have to limit my, my fluid intake leading up to the event. So I, I, I'm, I'm dehydrated. So I'm just knocking back bottle after bottle of water and, uh, you know, Powerade Zero, Gatorade Zero. Um, you know, with that said, like at something like Nathan's, again, I ran out of time before I ran out of space. It, it's, it, it's, uh, it's bittersweet when I'm not full. I've had contests where I was definitely, I was full I and mean, I've actually had to stop before time was called, but Nathan's wasn't one of them. I still had room. Um, so I honestly wasn't even that uncomfortable. Um, you know, physically everything's pretty much back to normal within three or four days. Um, okay. you know, it kind of stretched out. It feels like every stomach or every uh, muscle in your stomach is bruised, like uh, even three days later. Yeah. So hard. And I guess, because obviously I know, I, I think, um, you know, my colleague said that you, you practiced like three times before this particular event. Is that true? I should have done more. Yeah. But, I mean, I should have done more, uh, in years past, I've done as few as one or two, and I've done as much as nine. And I think it's, it's a, you know, I hate to say I've gotten lazy, but I figure oh, I've got my technique back. I'm hitting mid forties in practice. It'll go great. But I, I don't know if I've really pushed myself in practice. It's like, I've used these practice sessions to kind of get my coordination back um, and as self-assurance to, to remind or to, to, de to demonstrate to myself that I have enough space. I'm good to go. I'm not going to have any mishaps on the fourth. Um, but I don't know if I've really used my training and practice sessions to, to push myself, which I should do next year. So, and in a week like training, I mean, do you, do you have to limit? I, I, I yeah, I'm just trying to think, do you have to limit what you eat before? But is, yeah. is it a calorie thing, you know, for, yeah, for the I whole mean, kind uh, of time? So I do, um, I do about, a dozen to, I don't know, maybe a dozen and a half, 18 or so contests over the course of a year. Yeah. So it, uh, especially at the height of the season, it's kind of constantly finding that balance between, uh, you know, maintaining a healthy weight, fasting, allowing budgeting really for, for all the food that we eat in contests. Um, it's, uh, you know, with that said, I fluctuate. Um, I don't have it down to a perfect science, but um, yeah, you know, thankfully I like lean proteins and lots of fresh produce. That was my diet before competitive eating. So it doesn't feel like a chore to have to, you know, it, I don't feel like I'm restricting my calories. Um, I do fast just so that my digestive tract is empty. Um, and some, for something like Nathan's, I, I purposely go in a little bit. Um, well, it's what, it's what I consider my fighting weight, but it's probably a little bit, I, I, I go into Nathan's weighing less than I walk around normally. So normally mm -hmm. I might be 135, maybe even 140 pounds. Uh, the day I competed, it was 131 pounds. Um, it's just, uh, you know, watching everything and fasting and, and even even kind of restricting fluid and, uh, you know, shedding the, the bloat and the water weight. Um, I guess it's all part of the process, but I feel the more lean I am, I, I'm not, I, I'm very, very hesitant to, I don't want people to think that I'm saying the skinnier. Um, but the more lean and healthy I am, the more endurance I have on stage. If you imagine having to jog around the block or sprint around the block, you'll be winded if you're carrying an extra 20 pounds. If you're at, you know, whatever, whatever's healthy for you, if you're at that weight, um, you'll have a lot more stamina. Um, that's the best I can equate it.
Well, make, well, it makes sense because some people get the wrong idea and it's how people are just eating food. But at, at the oh, level no. that you're all doing it, no, you're athletes. So you have to be in that shape to, you know, you know, deal with everything that's going on. I mean, I think it's amazing, to be honest. I'm just you. watching it, I just, fun. yeah. Can't believe Thankfully, it. you know, next is a, a, a rib eating contest. And then I actually have a wing eating contest. Yeah, so absolutely. the next two are almost a break. Um, they don't really test our capacity. It's more speed and technique and coordination. Um, you know, I won't have to use all the space in my stomach for, for the next few events leading or coming up. Well, the lack of bread probably helps as well, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And the thing is, people always ask me, you know, so it's the hot dogs and the buns, right? And to me, that's of course. But what, what people don't, um, and very understandably, what they don't take into account is the amount of fluid that we have to use to get those hot dogs and buns down. If you drink, um, like I probably use about half a gallon of fluid, that's another four pounds, but there's some guys who use a gallon, you know, eight pounds or, or more. So you really have to, um, I, I think that's, that's one thing that people just don't realize. Yeah. So obviously with the hot dogs and you got ribs and, and wings, like all very different. Do, mm -hmm. do you have, obviously you have a technique, but like, how, how do you go about finding the perfect one for you? Is it literally trial and error? And it's like a kind of science experiment to see what's best? Yeah, I mean, I try to familiarize my food or at least know uh, as much about the item that I'm eating uh, mm -hmm. as possible. You really don't want to, you don't want any surprises. If you go in thinking that you're getting um, naked wings, which don't have the battering, um, but come, come to find you have a crispy breading on it, that's going to throw everything off. If you think you're getting uh, St. Louis style ribs, but you get something else, or it's a, it's a dry rub instead of a, a you know, a, a sauce. I mean, all these things are, are, you need to know them ahead of time. So yeah. uh, that's all I can really do. Um, ribs and wings change a little bit uh, from year to year, because often the sponsor will be, uh, the provider of the ribs will be determined by who won the best ribs the year prior. It, you, you know what I mean? So you have to be able to roll with the punches. You have to, you have to account for some flexibility. Um, with that said, the wing contest that I have coming up uh, uses a pretty tangy, somewhat spicy sauce. It's a very thick paste-like coating. So I, I need to get my flavor tolerance um, under control. And your partner, and you're married now, right, with, with Nick? Uh, we're technically engaged, but I mean, we, we kind of just say and feel like we're married. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's been uh, pretty busy, but he uh, competes as well. He uh, he had a personal best at Nathan's this year, 45 yeah. in 10 minutes. He's obviously not happy with his results, and we're both incredibly determined to do better next year. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a lot of fun. Uh, he won a wing eating contest in March. Um, I won the the I won last year's wing eating contest for this specific sponsor. So right. we're both kind of favored going into it. We'll see how it pans out. And um, I saw we had a record, like 50 hard boiled eggs in like three and a half minutes. Yeah, that was him. Uh, it was a, it was a short form contest. It was basically first to 50. And they were the they were the large ones. But apparently he was extra nervous and I had no idea because all along he had planned to uh, get down on one knee and propose to me right after that. Wow. I know. Yeah. I didn't see it coming. I wasn't even going to go to the contest because I was, uh, I mean, this was in April. I was a good deal pregnant. I was I clearly wasn't competing and I just felt, figured, you know, this is your event. You have fun. Um, but he booked my ticket without telling me. He just told me to come, al come along to Las Vegas. Um uh, and he used that opportunity with, you know, all of our uh, kind of fat friends there to propose. That's I'll never look at eggs the same way. Um, and obviously being a couple in the same industry, does that help both of you for motivation and do you practice together? And how does that Absolutely. work? Absolutely. I, um, I think I, I should lean on him a little bit more. I've got a great sparring partner right in my house and uh, right in my house. And I've, I've leaned on having somebody to practice with since I started this, you know, a decade ago. Um, so yeah, we, we push each other to be better. We remind each other of things that we swore we'd remember what ultimately forget like, um, you know, uh, oh, like wings coming up. I loved having chocolate milk handy because they were so tangy and spicy. So he'll remind me, Hey, don't forget your chocolate milk when I've, I've forgotten that 11 months ago, you know? So uh, with that said, we're incredibly competitive. I'm happy for him when he wins but i i very much dislike losing so uh <laughs> yeah it's a very competitive household
I can't imagine um, your grocery kind of bill when you're both practicing together that week. That must be quite interesting. Yeah, we we're both practicing. Um, you know, uh, hot dogs we're we're able to get directly from the source, so that's not um, that's not too too bad. Um, you know, we would take advantage of things like um, over here we'd have all you can eat uh, chicken wing nights at right. some chain restaurants. Honestly, they they kind of they fell to the wayside uh, around 2020. And uh, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Those were those were really great for practice. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, really to 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 balance what you just mentioned, what we'll do is you know have a small batch and uh, do speed trials so that we don't have to go through ten minutes worth of food each. Um, with something like hot dogs, it's kind of it's kind of important to do a full practice here and there. But with other foods, just um, getting that that coordination down you know, getting those first couple of minutes strategy down, um, that's what's going to be most important. And how, how big do you think better TV team can go? I know it's always been like a thing, but I just feel like with the rise of social media and it's just mm -hmm. becoming way more global now and so many more eyes are on it and everyone, I guess, because it's something that very, very little people could even think of doing. There's a wow factor there. So, I mean, yeah. what do you think the future could be for, for all of this? So um, I really like to look to what Japan's done with their competitive eating scene. Um, what they do is they have yearly events, um, but they'll they'll do it almost tournament style, and they'll invite some of the the same cast of characters back. Um, and it's and all of this is broadcast on regular TV, so you don't need an ESPN Plus subscription to hope to you know catch the women's contest or you know this or that um their events are broadcast on regular you know nighttime programming uh and people get to know the competitors because they'll do like little mini biographies and they'll really play up the rivalries and the alliances and it's almost like watching a, a reality show but in a much more wholesome family friendly way yeah um, people get invested in the characters so i really like what japan's done you know, uh, obviously they, they put up high numbers and they eat some amazing looking food, um, but they also play into the storylines. And I, you know, and for that, they, you know, those eaters enjoy, you know, pretty lucrative careers. So I think it'd be cool if we saw some of that, um, you know, carry over to America. Yeah. And um you're saying about it, you're you're far from done in this, and obviously I'm oh, asking. Oh yeah, because yeah. I, I don't really know what's a typical you know age to kind of pack it in. I mean, Joey Chestnut's still doing well, and he's older. I don't know how old he's exactly, but I, you know, I, I forgot. I think he's almost forty. His birthday's in November. I believe he's turning forty uh, yeah. in a few months. But yeah, Joey's older than me, and he's been doing it for longer. And he's pushing like he's eaten way more hot dogs in his lifetime than I have. So uh, you know, if I look to him as like a, a guinea pig I'll, I'll be just fine um but you know with that said i i had a baby in 2021 all my blood work was great you know despite being i guess advanced maternal age um you know i'm i'm turning 38 in a matter of weeks and i feel great um yeah so i don't see myself slowing down anytime soon well with your records and your and your streak i don't think there's much much reason to um yeah i mean eventually i'd probably like to you know, when the time comes, transition more to, you know, hosting or commenting uh, or even co-hosting a travel show where, you know, you get to take the audience to different food challenges or or maybe just experience different cultures through food. And it's not even about quantity anymore. Uh, I love traveling. I love food. I love raising money for charity, meeting cool people. So really, you know, we'll see where this can take me. Um, you're very much. Decided... What's that? Sorry, I'm saying you're very much like uh, invested in you know trying to help with like broadcasting and even trying to push it and I mean if yeah. you could get ESPN or other broadcasters to try and right. adopt they, that Japan plan that would be amazing so yeah I, I have gotten to um, participate in some of the the broadcast elements with ESPN um, yeah I don't know we'll see I mean even if ESPN picked up one of our other contests and you know say broadcast the the buffalo chicken wing eating contest over labor labor day weekend or or maybe a different network picks up one that's uh you know relevant to them it would just help uh everything grow so we'll see